buying a call forces a market maker to delta hedge this position by buying stock proportional to a line going perpendicular to the delta of the option. The delta is the slope of the PNL of the option at the current price. The act of delta hedging by the market maker essentially rotates their PNL profile for the option such that the delta is flat at the current price. As mentioned in a previous video, changes in the price creates gamma exposure for market makers and forces them to dynamically adjust their delta hedge by buying or selling stock proportional to a line going perpendicular to the new delta. When the line is pointing in the right direction, the market makers are forced to buy, whereas when the line is pointing in the left direction, they are forced to sell. This process essentially keeps rotating their PNL profile to ensure that the delta slope is always flat at the current price. More details regarding delta hedging of gamma exposure is explained in a previous video. However, the delta of an option can change independently of prices of the underlying. This can be due to changes implied of volatility or time, which create Vanna and Charm exposures for market makers respectively. To understand Vanna and Charm, it may be easier to not think of delta as the current slope of an option's PL profile, but to instead think of delta as the probability that an option will go in the money. Price changes can be modeled to follow certain distributions. Most price changes could be small, with a few large price changes occurring on the tails, or the distribution could develop in such a way that it widens to include larger price swings on the tails. When thinking of implied volatility and its effect on price changes, one can think of implied volatility as influencing the probability distribution of price changes. When implied volatility is low, price changes are clustered and typically smaller. As implied volatility increases, the probability distribution widens and has increased variance or deviation. Similarly, when thinking about the effect of time, when there is more time until an option expires, and there is a higher chance for larger price movements to occur. As an option becomes closer to expiring, the chance of large price swings starts to diminish, and one may expect price changes to start clustering and the tails to start narrowing in. Thus, to understand how market makers doubt to hedge their Vanner exposure, one can take an example of a market maker who is short an in-the-money call. The probability that the option will expire in the money is represented by the shaded blue area that is in the money. Market makers who are short calls must delta hedge themselves by being long stock. The size of this long stock hedge is proportional to the blue shaded area that is in the money. As implied volatility decreases, the chances of the option expiring in the money increases, meaning that the market maker must delta hedge their Vanna exposure by being long more stock. As implied volatility increases, the chances of the option expiring in the money decreases. Thus, the market maker must delta hedge their Vanna exposure by reducing their long stock exposure by selling some of it. As another example, this is a market maker who is long and out of the money call. The probability that the option will expire in the money is represented by the blue shaded area that is in the money. Market makers who are long calls must then delta hedge themselves by being short stock. The size of the short stock hedge is proportional to the shaded blue area that is in the money. As implied volatility increases, the chances of the option expiring in the money increases, meaning that the market maker must delta hedge their Vanna exposure by being short more stock. As implied volatility decreases, the chances of the option expiring in the money decreases, thus the market maker must delta hedge their Vanna exposure by reducing their short stock exposure by buying, buying or covering some of it back. The way market makers delta hedge their charm exposure is essentially identical in principle to the way they delta hedge their Vanna exposure. In the same way that implied volatility changes the probability that an option will expire in the money and thus changes the delta of the option, time until the option expires also changes the probability that an option expires in the money and can change the delta of an option independent of price movements. Thus charm exposure is analogous to Vanna exposure in that less time until expiration has the same effect as decreasing implied volatility by narrowing the probability distribution of price changes, whereas more time until expiration has the same effect as increasing implied volatility by widening the probability of price changes. To see the effect that market makers delta hedging their Vanna and Charm exposures can have when combined, take an example of a market where many investors have bought out of the money puts, thus leaving market makers short out of the money puts. Since market makers are short puts, they are exposed to potential infinite losses if the price of the underlying goes down and thus must sell or short the underlying stock to hedge themselves. As time goes by, provided that there are no large changes in the current price, 
the passing of time reduces the amount of days until expiry, thus slightly reducing the probability that these puts go in the money. Thus delta hedging charm exposure forces the market maker to buy back a small amount of stock. Many reasons could lead to implied volatility decreasing, which could be due to structural reasons in the VIX curve, or simply because investors have overbid for put options in anticipation of a market event. Whatever the reason, when implied volatility decreases, this again reduces the probability that these puts go in the money, thus market makers hedging their VANA exposure forces the market makers to buy back more stock. The effect of market makers delta hedging both their VANA and charm exposures by buying stock can push up the price of the underlying provided that the market has bought enough options. This increase in price itself also reduces the probability that these puts will go in the money which is thus another way to think of gamma exposure. That is, gamma exposure is the change in probability that an option will expire in the money according to changes in the underlying price. Thus market makers must delta hedge their gamma exposure by buying more stock in this situation. These increases in price can help further reduce implied volatility, which when coupled with the simple passing of time and the slow pushing up of prices that all this delta hedging can cause, means that market makers are effectively supporting the markets constantly until the options expire. Once the options expire, however, this constant bidding for stock by market makers is taken out of the market, leaving it potentially vulnerable to large changes in price. In markets that are dominated by the use of options, knowledge of how market makers must delta hedge their VANA and charm exposures can be taken advantage of by investors to identify the likely effect the market makers will have on prices at particular times and in particular volatility.